Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about the grid warp node. So let's get started. The grid warp node is a little bit more complicated than what we usually use, and it has a lot of uh, different applications. But the way it is set up actually makes everything a little simpler. So let's uh, jump into it and look at it. There are three inputs. Uh, one is called source, one is called destination, and the other one's called background. So you can use the node in two ways. One way is to have only a source and use the grids to deform that source. And the other way, which is called the morph, is using both source and destination. And you can either uh, deform one uh, onto the other and vice versa. And you can also mix the two images as you do the deformation. And it's known as these morph effects. Uh, that you've seen 100 times. So I'm just gonna start uh, with just a source and just show you the basic of the node. So here I picked two pictures and I have reformat them so they are the same size, right? And also the features of the characters are not too far apart. So when I will do a morph for this, that'll make it easier basically and all black and white. So there's no color problem. I just wanna make it simple. So let's get started and look at the parameters. A few tabs, uh, but let's get through it. So channels, you know that mask you know that then you have two things here like the source grid and then the destination grid so the source grid is the red grid so you can see it by just making it visible here so you can see here there's a red grid actually i think i can change the color to make it brighter so it's a little bit more visible on the video maybe destination very blue there you go so source grid and then this one destination grid right so that's fairly easy to understand. All this is the keyframe that when you're gonna animate one grid or the other, you can like travel through the keyframes, add a keyframe, remove a keyframe, copy or paste a keyframe. And then you can click this to automatically resize the grid to the source image that you have. Okay, now onto the settings. Um, so here is really what you are seeing as an output. You have different options there. What you can note also is depending on which option you pick, it'll show the grids accordingly to what makes most sense. So for example, you show the source, it will show you the source grid. You wanna show the source warped, means that you most likely want to warp the source. So what you need to see is the destination grid. So this is changing the visibility here because in here, uh, this is in automatic mode. So it's changing accordingly to what makes more sense, basically. Then you have the warp value that uh, will appear only when you are in the morph and the mix value as well will appear uh, only when in morph. So the warp value is basically sliding between the source and the destination. So if you have a source that is one shape, a source grid that is one shape, and a destination grid that is another shape, this is gonna go between the two. And the mix is basically a fade between image A and B, which is source and destination. Then you can, so I'm gonna go back to source, then you can pick what is the background. It is on the source, or is it on the destination, or is it on black, or is it on the background input, which is that input here. So you can pick that when you have an alpha, for example, and you want to already use that whole node as a comp to and put it over something, uh, you, would, you would use that and put it on background, for example. Then you have the background mix, which is a way of bringing the background back in front of the source or destination, depending on what you're looking at. And this you know as well, the B box. Then you have the transform tab, something you'll be very familiar with if, if you know the, the roto paint node. It's very similar. So you have one uh, for the source with all the attributes you need, and then one for the destination. By default, uh, they will be matched, right? The destination grid will take the same transform as the source grid. So if you wanna make, uh, instead of moving every single point of the grid, you can move the whole grid by translating here or rotating or doing whatever you want here. Then you have the render, which is the resolution of the sub mesh. You actually see one, two, three, four, five points, but the render when it's, when you're deforming, it actually have 10 subdivision here by default, but you can pick to have 20 or less or you know whatever you want to have. It's, if you go with something that is very extreme and you're gonna need more definition, you might wanna uh, look at that and raise this. And the options, we already kinda looked at that, it's uh, just the coloring of the of the grid. They tend to be a little faded by default, so when you have color, they're kinda hard to see. So you, know, you can push that or modify it. All right, so let's look at the most basic thing, which is just deforming an image. So for example, what I could do here is I want to warp the source. So that's my source, right? I want to warp this. So I'm going to go to source warped. Automatically, this is going to go to visible here. I can start moving the destination grid and it will look at what's on the source grid and then look 
at the destination grid and will move the pixels according to the grid. So if I'm doing this, I'm going to start dragging areas, right? Because my source grid, and I can show both to get an idea, is here. So it's taking the point from here and moving it there. So it's going like this point here is going to move there, see? So this is basically how you are using this to just do deformations. It, these are Bezier, so you can do the usual thing. By default, uh, it will add a keyframe, as you can see here, on both grids, because here you're in uh, this mode here, which is auto key. So if, if it was off, you could move that and it would not create a keyframe. So you might want to watch that if you want something not animated, for example, you don't want to, you, maybe you want to re remove this. The ripple, it's really to, when you create a new keyframe, is making the same transformation onto all the other keyframes, right? So if I have a keyframe here and I realize this one is not really at the position I wanted, then you can do like from start or all or to the end or just the range that you picked for this range. And if you move this up, then all the keyframes that I've created at other point in time will all move up the same way I just did that. Then uh, the number of uh, divisions. So you see here the grid has uh, five lines. So you can, if you want a quick way of getting more precise, you can actually change it here and it will change to, let's say, 10 precision. So now it has more uh, definition, right? So let's go back to five. Then you have all this toolbar here, pretty simple too. Here is to insert a uh, line or a column. So let's say you want to get precise around the eyes. So you're going to do this and you're going to do that. And you're going to do this. So it's making the whole thing a little more precise, you know, like this. Pretty straightforward. And then this way you can have a more uh, precise and just move just the area that you need. So minus to remove lines, that makes sense too. Okay. Then uh, this is to redefine the boundary. So let's say you don't want the whole thing. You just want to move something around the eyes. You can do that and redefine just this area. So both of your uh, grid are going to be just in this area. So redefine both grids. This is a split. So you can select, uh, let's say these and say, okay, I want to split it this way. Or you can select that and I want to split it that way. And or you can select uh, both and split both ways. All right, that's basically it. So I'm going to kill this node and recreate a new one just to start clean again. Of course, like uh, the crop node and all these nodes, they are depending on what node you have selected already. Otherwise, it's going to uh, create the node at the size of the comp that is set in your in your preferences here. Let's look for the other way of using it. And I'm going to get a little bit more in the details of source and destination grid. Now I'm going to plug in the destination. And like I said, I made these two so the eyes are not so far and the size is similar. So I can start doing a little bit more of a morphing from one to the next. So now that we have this and let's going to want to morph from this to that. So the idea overall is to match this, the, the, the shape that you want to morph from and the shape that you want to morph to, to the source and the destination. So I'm going to take the source grid and I'm going to match it to this. So I'm going to go source and I start matching. So I'm going to do it really rough and quick so you guys get it. And I'm going to go to the destination and I'm going to look at the destination. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing. So So we go to morph. What it's doing right now, it is taking the source, right? And it's applying the transformation from the source grid to the destination grid because the warp is 100%. But if you want to go back, and you see you're going to go back to the original shape. And if I go slowly, you can see it's morphing everything to the destination, which is the positions of the feature of that, of the destination. So it's hard to see right now, but if you were to move in the mix, then slowly you would start to see, oh yeah, okay, this is almost in the same position. One thing that uh, you want to do during a, a morph is to mix both the warp and the mix at the same time. One quick way of doing it is like if you do command and then click and drag, then when I'm going to move warp, it's also going to fade a little bit. And now you can see, obviously it's not perfect, <laughs> but it's starting to do something. 
So from there, if it's not perfect, you can refine, you can see, okay, what is not good? Okay, the eyes are definitely not good, so I need to be more precise in the eyes. So let's go back to the source and then see what we can do with the eyes. So what we could do, for example, is make sure that the tangents are good here and we're gonna need more points. So let's add I think that will make the point. And then now I'm going to do the same thing on destination because I have all these new points. Do the same thing I've done for the other one. Let's say this is not too bad. So let's try again. Let's go to the morph. And I'm going to hit Q and hide the display the overlay to have a clearer view. And I'm going to move that again. So now we look at the eyes. It's not perfect because the eyeballs are not in the same position, but you can see that the eyes are not so bad, right? So if you wanted to refine this, again, you could go and be like, okay, I need something for the eyeballs, right? So I can add more. All right, like this. I'm going to hide again. Go to morph, and now the eyes are moving much better from one to the other, all right? And we could continue, do the nose. Let's do the nose real quick. And now we can do the morph again. See, all the nose is much better. So now you're starting to have something. And obviously you would refine and refine and refine and you can have um, something that's not too bad. If you wanted to do this, and it was not still frame, but it was moving footage, then you would need to animate the source and the destination grid to match both pieces of footage. And that's a quick way of doing morph. Uh, again, I would probably, for shape like this, I would probably use um, spline warp, and I will go over that node uh, in another video. But I think uh, showing you this will give you a pretty simple idea of what you can do with the, the grid warp. So again, you can just use the source and then just deform that source on using the source and destination grid. But you can also use two inputs, source and destination, and then you can use the morph in that case and, and mix in and out the image A or B. And you can end up with a creepy faces like this. All right, so I hope this helped. Um, if you guys have uh, any questions, of course, ask in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. And if you have suggestions for other videos, leave me a comment as well. Have a good one. Bye.